life. Probably the most fascinating thing that exists for philosophers, poets, and of course, scientists. Humans have always pondered if they were alone in the insanely vast universe. They'd probably feel better if they had companions. So they started to explore by their own means, mostly their imagination, until the invention of the telescope in the 17th century. But what information can telescopes provide us in the search of older extraterrestrial life and where to look for it? Before answering these questions, let's take a look at the sun and our spaceship, the Earth. The sun is a mediocre star. It's neither small nor big. It's a medium-sized, a big dwarf star that is neither the hottest nor the coolest. As for the Earth, we're neither too close nor too far from the sun. We are where we should be to let life prosper, or in other words, in the habitable zone of the sun like the moon and Mars. You probably detected a pattern here. If so, you're right. Philosophers call it the mediocrity principle. It means that we're probably not as special as we thought we were, especially that about six centuries ago, it was believed that the Earth was in the center of the universe. It is debatable though. It happens also that amazingly enough, we're at the right position from our host star, the sun, which by the way, isn't a typical star as most stars are about 10 times less massive and live hundreds of times longer. And amazingly enough, not only life exists on Earth, but it exists in an astonishingly rich ecosystem. The sun's only about 4.6 billion years old, while the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. Rough age. During that time, i.e. before the sun's birth, billions of stars formed and died. So why don't we see any form of life in the old distant stellar systems? The answer comes in two parts. One part about what we see, and we'll leave it for later. And the second part is about possibility of the existence of an extraterrestrial life before the sun was born. First, could life have appeared around the first stars ever born in the early stages of the universe? What we know is that most stars in the universe are dwarfs. Their relatively small mass, and hence size, makes their habitable zone closer to them. Given this proximity, rocky planets would lose their atmosphere, which would be stripped away by the stellar winds. Besides, the ultraviolet radiations would kill every form of life on the planet's surface. Second, we know that hydrogen was predominant in the universe. It is what it's needed to ignite the first stars. But life as we know it requires the existence of heavy elements that form by stellar nucleosynthesis, which is the nuclear fusion of lighter elements to form heavier elements, such as oxygen and carbon, up to iron, then spread out in space through explosions. Hence, no rocky planets could form in the first place due to the absence of materials. So we have to wait a little bit until sun-like stars are born, which brings us to the second point. With that said, our sun's not the first of its kind to exist in the universe. In fact, many solar-type stars, i.e. with similar heavy element abundance, must have formed. Because we can see the product of their death as white dwarfs, i.e. the last stage of a solar-type star. So, one might think that it's possible that life, intelligent life in particular, appeared somewhere around this type of stars before life appeared on Earth. Why not? How can we ever know if there's an intelligent form of life somewhere? Firstly, starting with our solar system, we can begin by looking for some debris in space or on planets such as Mars or the Moon that ancient civilizations eventually left while they were traveling in the interstellar medium. This is the purpose of the recently announced Galileo project by Harvard University. We also explore further as well. Just as our main messenger from the cosmos is light that's emitted or reflected by celestial objects, our main source of information about intelligent extraterrestrial life would be the light they emit and the spectra of their planet or star. Hence, we'd be looking for biosignatures such as the presence of methane and oxygen in the planet's atmosphere. Astronomers use spectroscopy to identify the elements. We would also target technosignatures, which are mainly electromagnetic signals, such as radio signals, laser transmission, and city lights, 
or science industrial pollution that consists in detecting products of industry in the exoplanet's atmosphere the same way as biosignatures. But with the technology we have now, this would work for stars in our galaxy. If we want to detect early technological civilizations outside the Milky Way, they must have made tremendous technological advances and sent extremely intense beacons of light or transformed their surroundings. For that, they must have used most of the energy of the neighboring stars. R remember, today we're able to exploit only a small percentage of the solar energy. We can't send intense signals that survive the intergalactic medium yet. As we said earlier, life as we know it also requires a certain range of temperature, which requires the planet to be in the habitable zone of its star, so that water can exist in a liquid form. But could there be any form of life that's fundamentally different from ours? We've seen that life exists on Earth in the most extreme conditions of temperature, and pressure, etc. It's not excluded that life and maybe intelligent life exists in another form. It can be intelligent or basic in that new form too, but this raises many other questions too. If we ever find intelligent life in space, will we be as friendly as the ancient Greeks and Arabs and welcome our visitors or bring them gifts if we get to visit them? Or will we be hostile and think about the best way to make them buy the products of our civilization?